how you guys doing? Um, so I guess this is the uh, tutorial on how to do fur. So it's kind of hard for me to describe, so I'll just pretty much do it in front of you and kind of go as I uh, say words as I go. So here's the stuff that I pretty much use to make my uh, a lot of my creatures. Although I just late, recently have been using a slightly different brand because of how expensive this shit's getting. Yeah, because of inflation and all that. You know whose fault that is. Anyway, uh, so pretty much, uh, you know, so we got this rhino here as a, um, as I guess a, um, what do you call a, uh, willing participant? Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, he was going to get turned into something anyway, so screw it. Let's go. So, generally how I do fur is I just kind of put some on the beast, kind of lather it around, you know. I mean, I, you can really do it. You don't have to be specific. Depending on how much hair you want your beast to have, um, it kind of varies. Like, I guess since this is a rhino, um, I guess I kind of just go into long streaks that aren't too thick. Kind of like that. If anything, I probably should be using the other brand, but it's okay. Because of how expensive this shit is. It's alright, though. I mean, it's $4, but yeah, it used to be 2 So, again, thanks. <laughs> Either way, um, so we got the caulk on there now. Now, I need a little stick. Now, for you guys, um... Pretty much any sort of stick will work. I mean, preferably with fine, uh, with a fine point at the end. You know, toothpick, like a toothpick will work. I have some toothpicks. I have some little yellow sticks from back when I used to use these to paint at the auto body shop. Now that I don't use them for that, and the uh, little fuzz, little fuzz ball on the end of them are pretty much useless once the paint dries. I break them off and repurpose them for shaping. So, with my, I now have this little stick, and it's kind of an awkward angle where I'm at. Um, you pretty much kind of you rub it in, you know, you rub it in nice and good. You get it stuck onto the beast. And, of course, this will vary a little bit depending on if you're doing a mammal or a reptile. Mammals, um, honestly, how I learned how to do this was just I'd look at a... I would look at the creature I wanted to make... And I would just kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard for me to do do this from the angle I'm at. Hold on, let me, don't mind the chupacabra there in the back. Um, so pretty much you could just smear it any sort of way. So I'll just do it with my finger real quick. Just kind of smear it nice and good on there. Uh, I guess I'll do a very thin coat. So, you know, and you could do this with a stick. You could do this with anything, you know, it's, um, if you want it to spread further, and if you don't want it to stick to your finger, dip your finger in water um, and do it over and over because it will run out pretty quick. Um, but I'll explain more on, on that later. Let me just keep rubbing my keep rubbing my rhino here. Rubbing my rhino, that sounds like a euphemism for something. <laughs> just got to rub the rhino real quick, you know. <laughs> just spank the monkey, you know, choke the chicken. <laughs> Eh, God, I'm immature when it comes to my humor. So anyways, now that we got them nice and rubbed in, um, I'm going with the stick. Alright, and pretty much the way I, uh, I do fur is, let me clean off my little stick here. There we go. Yeah. And, oh shit, I had a stick on the side here. I didn't even have to get up. Eh, well, whatever. Either way, uh, say if I want to make it shaggy, I'll just, uh, I'll just kind of do this, right? And it's kind of hard to see there, but it's easier in person because, God, I can't see squat. Hold on. There we go. Can't wait to clean off this damn table because this is supposed to be the Monster Hunter table and I'm using it for a paint table. Um, Now, see, this is a little awkward looking, but you see, you kind of get the concept of where it starts to look like fur a little bit, and that's like if you want thick, shaggy fur. Um... Sometimes it helps, like, if you want a little bit more definition, you can mix it around and then stretch it out a little bit, you know. And you can do it like that. Or, 
if you want it really fine looking, this is where this kind of um gets a little tricky because you gotta you gotta watch yourself now. Just a cup of water, and it don't matter. I mean, I got paint sitting in there, but the paint don't affect the the caulk in the slightest when it's drying. It, so I'll dip my little stick there into some water, and if I want some really fine shapes here, I'll just kind of. God damn it, man. This shit's hard to do with the freaking camera in front of my face. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not, I'm usually used to, here. you know, I'll do it backwards. You guys don't need really, I mean, the technique is the same. So you just kind of, kind of just go like that. Because with the water, it's almost, it, it's like a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because you got to, um, you got to, uh, make sure you don't use too much water. Because then what happens with that is because the caulk itself loses its uh, strength um, when it's soft like this. If you keep dipping water into it, you know, it turns into like a sludge. So you gotta, you gotta be careful now. If you guys see here, I'll just keep doing this. And I'm going for a mohawk on its back. So if you keep doing this, um... Eventually, you kind of it kind of starts to look like a uh, long shaggy fur. And as you guys can see here, on a different angle, it starts to poke up like that. And depending on what you want to exactly do here, like say, I'm giving him yeah, like I said, I'm giving him a hair uh, mohawk type hairdo on his back here. Um, I'll um. Just kind of go on both sides and you just kind of keep going, you know. You and over time, it uh, kind of does itself for you. Now, clearly, this is kind of the beginning here. And if you want it to look better than that, you'll go and do the exact same thing on the opposite side to make it break up nice with the skin. Make it look like it's uh, decently attached onto there. And say, okay, you don't have enough. Well, just put more on there. Although, if you're, if the caulk is wet and has too much water on it, it will not be able to easily introduce more caulk onto the beast. So you got to kind of measure out what you're doing. So say I'll put a little bit more on there like that. Now, when you're putting that much on there, you kind of want to even it out. Hold on, look. There we go. I'm going to switch a stick. Let's just say, like, I'm going to even it out. Like this. Mush it in there nice and good. Yep, yep. That's how you do that. You just kind of Mush it in. And say since this is a rhino, let me just go ahead and push that to the to the front here to make a hump. Cause since I'm here, I might as well do it with you guys, you know, and make like a woolly rhino or something. Push to the front. To where you start to get like a big a big muscly hump and you keep going to the front of it. Where the shoulders are, because that's usually where the hump is for storing fat and such other things to have help the creature survive the worst parts of the winter. Now, if you wanted to make a genuine woolly rhino, I'd suggest maybe cutting down the ears a little bit, because most Arctic animals have smaller face appendages to help uh, retain heat, kind of like with uh, woolly mammoths having smaller ears. Helping uh, retain the heat in their bodies. I don't know why Asian elephants have less uh, less big ears. I mean, I'm assuming it's because they live in jungles. That's the only way I could think of why they would have smaller ears. You know, it's the big floppy ears ain't really necessary, I guess. Um, so then you kind of got a hump there. And I'm just going to... And it is nice to kind of clean off the, the stick there. There we go. So then, uh, you could either, if you want it to drag more, you could just kind of do it without any water. Because see, then it really pushes up quick. 
Pushes up quick, but more sloppy. To where you kind of get like this weird, almost wave looking effect. Um, sorry, effect. Man, my speech is a little slurred today. Sorry. And so then I'll mix that back in there to, to, um, you know, to get it nice and smooth again. There we go. And then I'm going to dip my stick in the water and then. And how you do it, you just kind of, you go like this, you know, you, you just kind of like, it's uh, with the grain, you know what I'm saying? It's like that, it's like the movie Surf's Up with the, the penguins, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go with the grain, you know, you gotta, that's how you get it. So see, then I got the mohawk on the one side, say if I wanted to add up to the other side, dip my stick in the water, go back up like this. And, of course, you could refine it over time, you know? And I mean, it's it's pretty much... Uh, honestly, this stuff's almost like clay, but it um, it's a lot sloppier. Like, say, if I, see, if I stick my finger in... Oh, by the way, this is another way to do fur detail. You just kind of tap on it, and it gets all weird. But I don't really do that too often, just because of how um, how bad it looks, frankly. But it is a way you can do it. Um, so yeah, I'll just, uh, keep going here. Give this guy a big old mane. And it's funny thinking about it, you know, a rhino with a mane, since horses and rhinos are, uh, are in the same family, the perissodactyls. Along with tapirs. Who the hell would have thunk that? Who would have, who the hell would have looked at a rhino, a tapir, and a horse and be like, yeah, yeah, these dudes, they're in the same family. But, um, that's what genetic analysis helps with. Because before we had all that, we just kind of had to guess based off of what animals look similar. Because I remember before the whole genetic stud or, uh, sorry, genetic, uh, stuff is, uh, people originally had uh, a big group of things called, uh, pachyderms. And that was pretty much just a general name for, um, all the, uh, what who was it? All the um, different large mammals. They kind of just smashed them together in one big group called pachyderms, and they did this for a lot of animals too, like um, aardvarks, ant eaters, and penguins. They all smashed into one family because hey, they eat ants. <laughs> therefore, <laughs> therefore they must all be related. But no, in all reality, penguins are related to carnivora, like dogs and cats. They're like a sister family. Um, aardvarks are closely related to elephants and hydraxes, manatees and such. Um, and then anteaters are in the same families as sloths. So are armadillos. Armadillos, anteaters, and sloths are all in the same family called Xenarthra. So it, um, so, you know, it's definitely interesting. So then, uh, yeah, we got a, we got a kind of crooked, hold on, there we go. Don't be afraid to kind of add some, uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Honestly, that's, that's pretty much how I, I learned all this stuff within a period of four, well, give or take. I mean, I only started getting good at it maybe like within the last, let me think, two to three months maybe. Um, but, uh, even then I'm still learning, you know, like learning how to make eyeballs and all that stuff out of Colton. Now say... Moving on, say if you want, oh, well, Chance, what if I want a double row, you know, a double row of, of, um, of fur here, like on his back or something? Oh, well, okay, I got you covered. Let me, fuck, I just sat that, oh, there it is. Um, okay, well, that's pretty easy. Um, hold on a second, I got an alarm coming off. Just give me a second, folks. All right, and I'm back. So, pretty much... The idea here is that I'm gonna add some I'm gonna add some cult there. Some cult they all uh, excuse me. Uh what I'm gonna do from that point is is uh clean off my stick and then pretty much is gonna um there we go. 
going to do this. Sorry about that noise in the back. So sometimes I'll, uh, I'll mix it around like this a little bit. It does look like a mess, honestly, from the camera's perspective. But, um, you know, it's pretty much, really, there ain't nothing to it, people. You just kind of got to kind of got to go with the flow, try it out yourself and figure out what works best. I'm just kind of giving you the incentive here to for uh, the video, you know, the incentive is in you're watching me to know at least where to start off at. So to straighten up the main here, poke that a little bit to the right place. If you don't want to rub any of it off, you just stick your stick into the water. And anyway, uh pretty much where I was going with this, right, was um because he was asking me how I did it on the Sorophaganax, the uh, the feathers. This was pretty much it. I just kind of did a little bit of on each side here. And depending on what I wanted, I'd, I'd either take off little pieces of it or... And by take off, I mean like you could literally reach down and just pluck it off, you know. Whatever. Um, and then, say if I uh, want to do this here. Then I go then I go that way. It's very messy. Honestly, if you have good clothes while doing this, don't don't wear no good take them shits off. Don't don't wear good clothes because I've ruined so many clothes doing this shit. Like learn from a veteran of doing this. Trust me, you're doing yourself you're doing yourself and your clothes a favor. See now. With doing that, I have these two kind of ass mohawks going off the animal's butt. Nope, see, and if you make it too long, then it, it collapses underneath itself. So you kind of got, you got to balance it off with bulk and height. There we go. That's how you go about that. And see, this stuff will lean over time, so I suggest doing it little proportions at a time. Or, don't be flopping it around like that, because it try to get it still while it's drying. That's the best way to do it. Um, now see, because I don't want this on the beast, I'm going to stick my finger in this water here and smooth it out. Smooths out all nice when you get your hand in some water. And by the way, if you want to do any like plates or armor plating on your animals, this is pretty much the way to do it. Like Just smooth it out. Like so. There we go. Then we, um, so with doing that, also watch out to not poke this, uh, because I do that constantly. So, so we got a nice smooth surface. And say if you want to do a, um, do like a shell or something on a beast, because I'm here, I might as well show you. I will make more of these tutorials in the future, but, you know, um, you just kind of put your stick... You got to put your stick in the water for this one. See? You'll do that. And then you just kind of go with whatever pattern you please. Another way to do it is just cover the caulk with water and dilute it. That way you can just constantly run your stick through it without having to dip it. Personally, I prefer to dip just because it's... um. Gives you more precision. And see, I could clean up that sloppiness right about... Oh, well, shit. <laughs> I said I could, but that was the reason why I was avoiding it. Was to, um... Was essentially to, um... Avoid that. But see, this also works in terms of uh, adding battle damage. Like, say, if you want your animal to have scars and cuts, scrapes and bruises and bites... This is how you do it. You do the exact same thing. Say, I want it cut by a three-clawed carnivore of some sort. You got one. You got two. And this is kind of sloppy just from the angle I'm working at. You got three. You guys get the gist. It's not straight, but... um, Here, I'm going to go off camera real quick and do it quicker just to show you guys what I mean and since like I don't know depending on like what 
if you have a backstory for your beast and you're like, hey, it got clawed this way or it got clawed that way, then you'll add, uh, regardless, uh, you're, you'll add, uh, depending on the beast, you'll add how many claws it got cut by. Say, I don't know, like this here, it kind of looks gnarly, got cut, um, by who knows what, um, for the sake of argument, I don't really know, uh, little, little dinosaur or something, a theropod. Anyway, let me see, so I'm gonna smooth all this out, and how you do bite marks, at least one of the ways I know how to do bite marks is you could, um, kind of just poke it in there, you poke it in there, and you poke a hole, and you do it in a, in a row, depending on how many teeth it got bit by, and then say, like, if the animal bit and then tugged backwards, it'd be more like, something like that, kind of nasty looking and gnarly. Um, but say, since I don't want any of this, since it's supposed to be just a furry rhino, um, I'm gonna smooth it out once again, and it does get thinner each time, so you gotta, gotta, and it's hard to apply a caulk once you, um, once you, uh, get it wet, because see, watch what happens. It, it don't, it don't really stick worth a crap. So you, um, since I want it to be fur... I'm just going to go over it like so. Let's have a, give it a little bit of a mohawk on the end here. So I don't know, for beginners, I guess I recommend the, uh, the water, the way of doing it. Um, because let me tell you, I was doing this stuff for years without the water, and man, the water advanced my sculpting capabilities so much on this, for sure. Straighten that up a little bit. There we go. And then, uh... You know, maybe have some little pieces of it sticking out on the side, you know. Give it some, uh... There we go. And say, um... Like if I wanted to add some stomach hair, you kind of... Or some, like, facial or stomach hair. Just go on the bottom here. Smear it on the face, you know. I'm not being as, um... Uh, precise as usual just because of how I'm the angle I'm at so say I'll rub it in Rub it in nice there And then with this one it's easier just because gravity does a lot of it for you Oh watch out there Reapply that on the face Scrape it off on the side here. And sometimes it'll do that, so you just kind of redo it over and over until it, until it looks right. This is for people with patience. Like, if you're impatient, don't even bother. Because this shit will take a long time. So there you kind of got that. Let's say if I want a little extra on there. There we go. And a little bit extra on there. Mix it in nice and good. I don't want to cover that eye because that eyeball looks really good. Props to the little Chinese people that made the eyes here. They did a good job. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know this shit wasn't made in America. And how do I know so? The little little thing that says made in China down there. <laughs> oh, oh, son of a bitch. Alright, well, if that... Great, and I got it on the phone. Nah, that's alright. So, yeah, see, guys, I made a mistake there. I wasn't paying attention. You got to pay attention when it comes to this. 
um, how I remove it off of things, I'll just, I'll use the blunt end and just kind of scrape it off, or you could just wash it off. Either way, whatever you want to do. So it kind of got that look to it now, like it's a little shaggy. Got a half mullet. Or sorry, mutton chop, not a mullet. Say like if I want to make a hanging down beard, I'll just tap it over again. There we go. And depending on what motion the animal's in, maybe you have the hair curve that specific way to go with the well, the decent motion. As for this guy, frankly, um, after the tutorial, I'm just going to flatten all this out and uh, make it smooth and then fix them up. Because I actually kind of want to make them the rare two-horned rhino from Far Cry Primal. I think that'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, this is pretty much a fur tutorial. If you guys got any questions for me, let me know. I'll answer them. And uh, I hope all of you have a good night.